Hey y'all, how are you guys doing today? First off, I want to say Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope that you um, are having a lovely holiday. I hope that um, you are getting whatever your hearts desire, whether it that be being with your family, friends, whoever it may be, child. Let me fix this, y'all. Move up some. So yes, I got on my holiday outfit. My mommy uniform. I did have on, JB and I did have on matching pajamas, but child, I'm hot. So I had to switch into this top. So y'all, we're going to jump right into it. It is wash day for me. I'm behind. What else is new? Um, I'm going to be flat ironing, straightening my hair. I'm going to get into that. But the purpose of this is to detangle, detangle, detangle. My hair is so dirty. I know it's very dirty. Um, hmm. I am so behind on videos. Hear me out. Hear me out, sis. Hear me out, okay? This is a serious situation. I'm behind on those reviews. And to make it even worse, I'm buying more products. I'm going to be doing those videos here soon. But I'm not going to be leaving you guys hanging, hence this chit-chat. And so we're going to be detangling my hair while talking to you guys. Let's get right into it. I have some aloe vera gel that JB cut up for me, child. Hot mess. <laughs> so y'all know how we do this. I talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube, and watching what I'm watching on TV. Baby, 2023 is about to end, and it's the end of revealings of revealing girl. It's the it's the awakening. It's uh, revelations are coming. Um, some of this stuff though, you guys, are we really surprised? Like seriously, are you really surprised by some of the stuff that's coming up? Because I'm not. Hear me out. Before we get into all that, let's just go ahead and talk about what's going on in my personal life. Let me put this hot comb over here. So it's Christmas and JB got up early for Christmas. When I tell you early, I mean four o'clock. And I knew he would get up early and truth be told, I was already up. Because y'all, I have insomnia really bad. Um... Anyway, enough of that. He got up, got all his presents, y'all. He got every, <laughs> my old school baby. He got everything from a blockbuster lancelet, or how do you pronounce it? Basically, you can hold a blockbuster card, and my husband has a blockbuster card that we need to find around this house. Um, y'all, I'm just using this aloe vera, and I'm just going to be finger detangling and then going in with, the, with a comb. He he received so many so many quirky things. Of course, I got him some new shoes because he needed some new shoes, and um, games because he's a gaming kid. Um, I got him a poster from one of his favorite movies. It's The Wizard with Fred Savage of all people. Child, my my child is such an eighties baby. But the one thing that he's been playing the most besides his Wii U Wii U that my husband bought bought him, child. He's been playing with that Snoopy. Remember, y'all, remember that old school Snoopy ice cream cone where you would put ice in it and then you would grind it? It was like a, um, it was like a igloo type of house. And I know that's probably not political, politically correct, but you would put the ice in it. Snoopy's big ass was on top of it and you would grind it and it would, you would get ice, right? And then you put like a little bitty like syrup package. Let me tell you something. He's been in that thing. He's been playing with that the most. He, first of all, all of the little uh, Kool-Aid pack is gone already. He's been in there grinding it. He was grinding that thing for a good 30 minutes just to get two gulps of snow cone. And he was like, oh, this is good the first time. Oh, this is good, mama. Second time. That's a ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, this is a ripoff, mama. I don't say anything because I... I already know. I relived this 30 years ago. I already know what's going to happen. So I didn't say anything. I said, oh, I'm so sorry, baby. You see how the parents be? <laughs> you see how I be? I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, honey, that it's not working. But <laughs> but we're enjoying it. And my husband is not here. He's in Kansas. But we did FaceTime him so that he can um, 
talk to him and, and, you know, just let him know how everything went. And so my parents and niece are coming tomorrow. Baby, I'm having to baby proof the house because she's bringing her baby. Now, her baby isn't really that busy because she just turned one. It would be totally different if she was bringing a toddler. Her toddlers be into all types of stuff. But this is a baby. She's still sitting on people's laps, laps and looking around. So she'll be okay. But you can never be too safe. So I'm making sure that there's not... A bunch of stuff just laying around sorry y'all i'm finally getting some shedded hair which is good so yeah um i could have went over to my best friend's house but i needed needed to do my hair so there's none of that happening we went to go visit my husband in kansas he's working in right on the border of kansas and there's nothing to do in kansas nothing particular chit chat me you guys i don't really care like I mean, I do care, but I, it doesn't bother me to live in some place that's that. Because I come from humble beginnings, you know what I mean? So, my thing is that as long as it's clean and safe, I'm cool. You know what I mean? So, I said, well, you know what? I'll cook. He's like, well, I don't know if you can cook on the stove. I'm like, you must don't know who you married. I can cook on the stove. Matter of fact, I can, I can cook outside. Oh, yes. Give me a Dutch oven. If you could put the fire together, I can cook, I can cook outside. I'll be good. So, sure enough, I cooked slayed the food he ate all that food so fast because uh mr man has lost weight he my husband is tall and he's down to like he's lost like 10 pounds because i ain't cooking you see and that's nice so i mean i've lost weight too so anyway y'all we went there nothing there but to eat and vintage uh excuse me thrift shopping with jb and i went to this banging baby when i tell you this is one of the best thrift stores. Y'all, I'm so old-fashioned. One of the best thrift stores that I think that we've ever visited. JB and I, we all went as a family one day. And then I whispered to JB, we'll come back and spend all day in here. And that's what we, I don't know if y'all heard me. I told him, I said, we will come back and spend all day. We spent a good two hours in there. Ciao. They had mostly home stuff, but toys, um, and old toys to equipment and they had it upstairs and so JB and I went upstairs and all of a sudden I hear JB uh he yells mama they have eight tracks and the owner downstairs started laughing she's like I've never seen a child so happy about seeing eight tracks I said well, you have no idea so I thought he would get uh a track player because they found he found an eight track player but instead he um he ended up getting some coins. And I got some vintage vases or vases. I can show them to you guys. And I've been wanting something like this because I do switch up my tablescape depending on the seasons. And so for spring, I have a blue, white, lemon. And so I felt these beautiful, what are this called? What is this called, you guys? Shana Reese? Shana, Shana china reese girl i don't know it's cute though they're probably not legit vintage and they because they were very affordable like three and four dollars i got like four of them um and so this is so nice so nice 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 i'm so excited to i know spring is going to be here i can't believe that we're already at the end of 2023 that's crazy so yeah um my family is coming and then after my family's coming tomorrow they're coming tomorrow we're actually going to go up there, meaning JB and I, we're going to visit this coming weekend. We're going to spend the night because he's still out. You know, he doesn't go back to school until June 6th. Oh, no, January, January 6th. So, yeah, so that's going on. I contacted my another family member and let them know that I'm going to come visit them. Because that's the whole point, you guys, moving back is to make sure that I reconnect with my family and, and really spend time with them. So that's what's been going on. Everything is, is good. Everything is great. Um, I'm feeling good. I'm looking good. <laughs> I'm trying, girl. I'm trying. So you guys, I do have another video that... Let me tell you something. It was a mess for me to record this video. I did a video on goals, goal setting um, because it's the end of the year and I just don't like the setup. I did a downward taping or filming of it and it, because I'm not used to it, and I'm pretty sure I could get away with the one time since I probably won't ever do it again. 
it'll be okay but i just don't like it let me know if y'all still interested in, in seeing that and i can make it live it's a pretty long video almost 20 minutes of me sharing how i set my goals what i'm using what i've done in the past and all of that because i do set goals as as an individual i've always done that I haven't been that great <clears throat> these past few years, and that's what I was basically explaining on what I plan on doing differently this year. So yeah, I have that video coming, and as I stated, of course, this video, pressing up my hair, and then hopefully in January, I can get back to the um, the, the, the product reviews. I'm sorry, y'all, I'm all over the place. I can get back to the product reviews, and we can get busy with that so all right you guys what i'm watching on youtube first off i would like to say that i'm so glad to see colored beautiful was back but baby when i saw african export actually commented on somebody's channel on her channel i was like are you serious i was so surprised to see that a lot of the og natural hair are they're lurking they really are and the reason why i know this is because i do i am I communicate with some of them. I'm not going to name drop. I communicate with some of them, not a lot of them, but, and I know that they're, they're lurking. They're, they are around. That's it. What else you guys, again, the true crime, I'm all on, uh oh, the true crime I'm all about, but let me tell y'all about, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell y'all about this, a little bit about this one true crime story that I was so surprised by what happened and the outcome, it really had me like, because typically when I've been watching these true crime cases, I try to guess what's going to happen. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> I knew she killed her. I knew she did it. This one, I was shocked. So it's the case of Mary Day. So I'm not going to get into all the details. So a long story short, there's this, this child who went missing and... The sisters of Mary Day came forward years later and questioned the other sisters, like, what happened to Mary? You know, Mary apparently had ran away. But the sisters that were, her sisters, excuse me, were basically had a hunch that they felt that their parents actually killed their own sister, Mary. So the one sister went to the other sister and was like, so whatever happened to Mary? And the one and the other sister was like, oh, we don't we don't talk about her. We don't talk about Mary Day. So I was like, what? Her parents never talked about this particular sister. Um, the parents were like, she ran away. She always does that. She always, but the, the sister was too young at the time of her running away to understand what that meant and what the relationship was like. Long story short, girl, the sisters ended up filing a missing person because the parents never did it. And I think the child was like 12, 13 years old. She was a child, basically, under the age of 16, 18, but definitely under the age of 16, 15, right? She found a missing person. The person that the investigator started doing all of this work to try to find Mary Day. They even went as far as to interview, I believe it was the stepfather and the mother, bring her in, and they're like, why did you never claim your child as a missing person? And the mother was like, because Mary always doing some foulery, some foolery stuff. She always running away. And I was like, you sound, something's up. So they brought cadaver dogs out to um, a particular location that the family was known to be in. The dogs had sniffed something. The dogs found a shoe. And I was like, oh my God, they found this child. They found the shoe. They kept digging, 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 digging. Nothing but a shoe. Everything goes, the case goes cold, basically. A couple of months go, go by, and all of a sudden, the detective that was on the case, he gets a call from Phoenix, and he's like, we found Mary Day. He said, like, where was her body? He said, no, we pulled over a person, and she presented a, a license or ID with Mary Day. And the cop was surprised, like, so Mary is alive? They're like, yeah, she's alive. When I tell you, I'm like, what? So Mary's alive. So Mary Day, they called they called her Phoenix Mary, right? They called her Phoenix Mary. And so he was like, y'all, let me do my hair. So he was like, we need to figure out if this is really <laughs> Mary Day. So they did a DNA test, did the DNA test, and came back positive. It's really Mary Day. So they're like, what the? Is so they did this long investigation, and the original 
investigator, he got off the case. Another woman came on and she decided to really go in um, and, and, and talk to Mary. And the sisters, her because she has two sisters, Mary Day does. Um, they were talking to Phoenix Mary because Phoenix Mary ended up moving in with one of the sisters. Now, their biological father passed away when he did. He left them all a lump sum of money, but they had a code to where they all knew what the code was about the lump sum of money. And so when the other sister asked her what the code was, Phoenix Mary, supposedly Mary Day, was like, um... Mama said, Mama said, Mama Kusa. That's not the code. When the code was. <laughs> the, uh, the code, the code word was some like Shaka Khan song or something. You know what I mean, y'all? So she basically did not. The, the sisters felt like that wasn't their biological sister because there were so many things she didn't know. Um, and it just didn't feel right. This one investigator was still doing it, still, still looking into it. Um, by this time, unfortunately, Mary Day had, Phoenix Mary, excuse me, had developed cancer and she really wasn't about talking to pe people, but the detective was like, you know, let's just give yourself and your family some closure because they, your sister's been looking for you all this time. She finally agreed to, to talk to this one detective. Come to find out this girl did run away after her stepfather yelled at her because she, he, he accused her of poisoning his dog and killing the dog. And so there was a there was speculation that perhaps due to that, the family did kill her. But she was so scared, she actually ran away that night. Excuse me, y'all. She ran away that night. Why can't y'all tell me that was on me? The little girl ran away that night, right? Teenager. And from then, she was a drifter going to this state, this state. Um, and another thing that made them suspicious is that Phoenix Mary had a Southern accent and they said, well, while she was, she, she was in the South a long time, basically doing her primary years. That's why, she, that's how she developed a Southern accent. So, and so security, she really didn't have a job. Um, she was strung out on drugs for a while and she just had some substance abuse, but it was really her. And so her sisters came to a closure. They accepted her. Oh. I felt a certain type of way that, you know, they didn't believe her because looking at the picture of the grown up Mary Day, she looked like the child photo, same structure, same, same facial structure. And another thing, and it's something that the detective, the one um, lady detective was saying that sometimes when you do, when you're on certain drugs or even if it's alcohol, it can do something with your memory loss. It can do something with your memory and your brain, of course. We know this. And so that's probably why she didn't know all of this stuff. But she can remember she couldn't remember a lot of the things that her sisters knew about. So I just thought that was so interesting, you guys. So um watching that and girl, we're gonna talk about this Kristen BBL. Let me tell you something. So it's been a week, almost two weeks now, that Sophieology, she's a young lady that lives out in Houston, Texas, and I actually have been following her for about three or four years. I discovered her on YouTube, and the reason why I liked her videos initially is because she would do three-in-one videos. She would do makeup, hair, and outfit, and it was cute. I thought it was cute. Um, and I liked some of her videos. She would start off with a Bible scripture and all of that, so she's Nigerian. My, she actually goes to UNT, which is my school, my old college. And so I don't know if she's still enrolled there or she she graduated. She's very young. Now, this is not to be shady or anything because I thought she was older. She's only 25. And not, not that I thought she was like in her 30s, but I thought that she was in her late 20s, at least 27, 28. Because sometimes she comes off a lot more mature than I thought she was. However, now with some of these videos, I'm starting to see the youth. So she had, she's gone viral because she stated that she had a Christian BBL. And BBL, you guys know, is a Brazilian butt lift, which is the most, it is the most dangerous surgery you can have. Um, they go overseas because it's, it's cheaper to do it. Um, it's very, very, very unfortunate that so many women have died from it, and some of them just don't care. They still, they still do it. So anyway, 
this one young lady did it anyway and i saw a video of hers on on six Mile on instagram because i follow her on instagram too and just her the way she it came off as i don't want to say cocky I don't want to say that. I don't want to say it came off as cocky, but it came off in a very distasteful manner that I had to unsubscribe for that. So then I said, okay, well, let me check her out on YouTube and see what she's talking about. I think that her statement that she got a Christian BBL, I think her saying that was a tongue in cheek. I really do. I really do think that. However, I'm going to say this. As someone, a young person, a influencer on a platform, she has to know by now that there are tons of other young women her age and possibly even younger who are looking at her, you know, and they they are inspired. Um, and so the video that I saw recently, she basically said, you know, God woke me up. This is a very dangerous, you know, surgery and he, I was blessed enough basically and I was able to wake up. This is where I have an, I, I kind of have an issue with all of that. Um, and this is not coming from a place of judgment. As Christians, we are called to live a certain type of life. Now, I'm not going to say that, that we should, I, I don't think we should be placed in boxes. I'm not saying that. But Christian and BBL, to me, don't go in the same sentence. It's an oxymoron. Um, so don't use that as an excuse to get a BBL. Say that you are, you are self-absorbed and you wanted to have your butt done. I would be more, I, I would appreciate that more than anything. Don't put no type of Christian spin on it. Um, and she, you know, she was saying, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to keep it up. I'm going to make sure that I exercise and do what I need to do. It's more than just that. Like when you have surgery like that, you may have to have surgery again because she's so young. Your body, and this is another thing, you guys, I, I am a, a part of me is against any type of surgery before you have kids because your body changes so much i mean like seriously it changes i mean even let's forget having kids going from 20 to 30 your body is changing um and i think a lot of these young women they don't know that even your face changes yeah so it's her body it's her life she could do whatever she wants Um, leave the world behind and I seen mixed reviews about it but I liked it you guys it's on Netflix it has Kevin Bacon it has Julia Roberts it has a fine chocolate brother I can't re uh, pronounce his name it begins with an M um, he played in Moonlight I enjoyed the movie it was different you know besides the deer sitting up staring at you that would have freaked me out but it was different, and I know a lot of people, I'm not going to give any spoilers. I know some people were confused about the ending. I have a different opinion. I think, I'm just going to say this, I think everything is going to be okay. I don't think that it's the end all for end all. Look at this, y'all. Look at this knot. Can y'all see that? You see that? I need to work on that. Let me put some conditioner on it. But yeah, I enjoyed the movie. Um, there's another movie that I added to my list. It's called Maestro. It's about a conductor who falls in love with a woman, but he's really playing for the other side. And maybe he's playing for both sides, y'all. We just don't know yet. He, he don't know what that means. Um, going to be watching that soon because I added it to my list. Netflix has a couple of things coming out that I'm excited to watch. Also watch May, December with Julianne Moore. It is roughly based on the life of Mary Kay Letourneau. You know, the teacher that... So, she ended up dying from cancer, you guys, a couple of years after. Okay, baby, can you go in there? Because I'm talking about some disturbing stuff. Can you go in there? Totally forgot this. Ciao, T.D. Jake. Now, that's what I was talking about when I said, are you surprised? 
Let me tell you something. As soon as he became affiliated with Oprah Winfrey, that's when you should have known. Not to be surprised about T.D. Jakes. Now, there's still some information coming out, but it is, it's been confirmed that he will go to these Diddy parties. And I guess the main thing that people have been saying is that he is a, a, a power bottom, which um, I'm not going to go into detail of that, but it has to do with the LGP, LGBTQ community. And you, you, they know what a power bottom, bottom is, girl. Um, and so, ciao. I've seen some of the videos and I've seen, no, no, I've seen one video of him dancing at a party. And it's not, let me just say this. It's not to say that Christians can't have fun. I will say this though. In my opinion, if you are a man of the cloth, if you are a pastor or a first lady, I feel like that you are held at a different, you have people that are looking up to you to live a certain type of way. Again, this is very similar to the, you know, if you're calling yourself a Christian, why are you getting a BBL? So we are called to be set apart from the world. He said it's so petty. He is so petty. He's been posting for him to be that old and acting like this. I mean, he'll be posting all the time on a weekly basis, almost daily basis about P. Diddy and all his stuff um, that's coming up. Not surprised about that either. Before they even came out how he was. There is a video of him. I think it was him. What is that one that married to the Hispanic girl? His girlfriend was Hispanic girl. She was on one of those love and hip hop shows. I'm gonna think about it here in a minute. But anyway, P. Diddy, him, another guy, and a Rasta guy with dreads in his, you know. P. Diddy was just being very inappropriate. Clearly he was drunk. And at one point, he tries to lift up the, this guy had on a type of garment that almost had like a apron in the front. And Diddy was trying to lift it up and was basically trying to see his package. And it was just very inappropriate. And even the guy was like, hey, you know, don't do that. So there's been rumors for years about P. Diddy being bisexual. Um, I remember seeing a, a, a <laughs> A thread years ago that one of the reasons why he had Cassie to shave half of her head is because he wanted to have the feeling of being with a man and then flip her over and, and it's a woman. I'm like, oh, that's that's a bit much. But I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. So again, I am not surprised that all of these allegations are coming out about T.D. Jakes just because who he surrounds himself about. There is a video of Tyler Perry laying hands on T.D. Jakes and form. I think that was a skit, but don't play like that. These people are going to get tired playing with God, especially in the times that we're in right now. They're going to get, they, they, that's all I got to say. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a mess. So back to the movies I'm watching you guys. So definitely leave the world behind. May December with that, you know, Mary Kay Eternal. There are so many women now that, I was just watching a video on Carlos King of a black teacher, African American teacher that was caught being inappropriate with her with one of her students. And in the comments, I seen a post from a, a, a woman who was like, you know, this is a shame. I was a teacher and these kids, I will say, it can be hard with these kids. They're very aggressive. And, no, it can be hard because this is the thing. I don't even find don't even find anybody under the age of, of 30 attractive let alone a 12 14 15 these are probably 14 15 year old boys at this point that shit is not cute that is a child how stupid people can be to think that you can go come up here and have a full-on affair with a young boy and don't think he's not gonna go tell his friends this is a child with an undeveloped brain he's gonna go brag about it you're going to lose your job. Know about, but right now with social media and the way that things are, are operating in these streets, I don't see how anyone would even consider that. It's disgusting to me. So y'all pray over your kids in these schools. And yeah, they're, you know, the kids are very developed and 
it is what it is. I mean, and this is the thing. I remember when I was like 11 years old, I was very developed and I had grown men hitting on me. Grown men. Child, you, and you couldn't tell me nothing because I didn't know any better though. I got that Tony Braxton haircut with my chubby ass. <laughs> I, my auntie cut my hair short. Um, that Tony Braxton haircut. It was short like Tony Braxton. And so, and I looked like I was legal, but I wasn't. I was only 11 years old. <sighs> That's just sad. You're going to lose your entire livelihood your family over this and like i say that the women get off a lot easier than the men and even in the comments if you look at if you look at some of those videos the comments compared to the men that have been caught versus women you have the the men grown men saying oh i wish this was me in school or she's you know i wish that was my teacher or the teachers didn't look like this in my school like if you have a child that age would you be okay with it? let's flip it around if you had a daughter Doing having that with a man that was a 35 year old man cares what he looks like would you be okay with that but since it's a, a young boy with a woman oh he's the main man lucky 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 boy a mess i'm almost done baby i'm 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 about to be done like, you can watch youtube on there and get out of my way wish them a merry christmas merry christmas <laughs> Merry Christmas, you guys. Take care. Here, let's pose for a picture. Here, put it down. <laughs>